Today we are in a brand new series called Made for More. And what we're talking about is what Paul talked about the church. Because you have to understand something. When you don't know something, it, you, you miss out on it. It's until you know something that you gain knowledge, you gain an experience. You're able to tell about it because someone told you. And when it comes to the church, there are things that God has given the church that we can experience today, that me and you can experience today. Amen? But we, don't, we won't experience it if we don't know it. And so Paul, in the book of Ephesians, is building up the church and he's encouraging the church and he's letting them know the benefits that come with knowing Jesus. The benefits that come with starting a relationship with God. It's different when, when you know. It's different when you're in a place, in a position to receive all God has for you. If you, ever, if you ever applied for a job and you got the job, you know, the first thing you say is, man, I got the position. I got the job. I got it. Because position matters. And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are in position for every promise that God has for you today. Amen? You're in the right position because of who you belong to. Because of who you're connected to. Because the position you have. I remember when me and my brother were... Um, <coughs> When me and my brother were in elementary, I think elementary, yeah, yeah. We were in Puerto Rico visiting our family. And um, my dad's cousin at the time, back in the day, in the town that they were living in, they used to own a gas station. And um, my dad's cousin, I remember when he went to go visit, he was working the gas station. He was in the back. It was really cool and really weird at the same time because he was like, he had a bunch of cash just counting money. It looked very godfather-like, and I didn't know if it was illegal or not, but I remember being in that gas station, and then he tells me and my brother, he's like, hey, get it, whatever you want, and then we were kind of looking at each other like, like, we can get it? He's like, yeah, so we grabbing, and we're just waiting, and then he's like, and he was looking at us, and he goes, open it, and we had like, I think it was like Cheetos or something, he's like, open it, and so we're just like, we can open it? And he's like, yes, I'm telling you to open it. He's like, you want something to drink? And we're like, yeah. He's like, okay, go get the drink. And then we got it. He's like, open it. He, he, he kept telling us to open it. And then because he was the owner of the gas station, and it, it felt very weird. I felt like I was robbing the place because everybody else is in line having to pay at the gas station. And then me and my brother just getting whatever we want and eating it and drinking it. And we didn't have to worry about anything else. All he kept telling us was, was to open it, to, to, to do what he gave us permission to do. And it's the same thing with God. God has given us the position. God has given us the opportunity. God is telling us today that we can open, we can break, we can do everything God has told us to because he is with us and we have a position with him. Amen? We are in the right position. If you're in this room and you've never given your life, your life to Jesus, today is the opportunity that you can so that you can experience everything that God has for you. But we have the position. We have the position. And Paul is going to encourage the church in the book of Ephesians and to remind them of who they are and what they can do through Jesus Christ. Once you have that in your spirit, and once you understand that, the position you have in God, it changes the way you live. It transforms the way you speak. It transforms the way you pray. It does such a transformation because you understand who you are connected to. So if you have Bibles, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 1. I need a water. Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, man. We're going to be in verses uh, 17 through 20, but we're going to start in verse 3. The Bible says this. It says, Praise be to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. I want to stop there. Paul is telling the church this. He says, Praise be to God that we have every spiritual blessing through Jesus Christ. In other words, every divine promise that we read in the Bible, we get that through Jesus Christ. That me and you, we are blessed by God. That me and you are blessed to have something supernatural on the inside of me and you. 
that we and you can experience everything that God has, that me and you are blessed, that me and you can walk in the blessings of God, that me and you don't have to live defeated lives. It's very different because when you don't know God, you think that life is, is always going to be the way it is. You think that life's always just going to be hard and it's never gonna, nothing's ever going to change and my family's going to be the same and things are always going to be the same. But when you may meet Jesus, something changes on the inside. And then it begins to be changed around the outside of you. And the people around you begin to change because that's what Jesus does. Jesus does a transformation that nobody else can do. God does a new thing in you. Maybe you used to be the angry person, punch the walls, have a bad attitude. But when you met Jesus, you found love. You found grace. You found a new way to live. Maybe you're in this room and you were an alcoholic. You were addicted to drugs. But when you met Jesus, it broke something on the inside of you that you realized, I don't have a taste for it anymore. I can be sober. I can, I can have a better relationship with my kids, with my marriage. Because of the relation, because of Jesus Christ. Church, we, are, we have to understand something. You are not defeated. You are blessed. You are blessed. Your family is blessed. The fact that you have Jesus in your life is already a blessing. And every defi- divine thing that comes from heaven belongs to me and you today. And Paul is telling him that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing with Christ. Now let's go to verse 17. Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 17 says this. I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that the, the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. I want to stop there. The first thing that Paul tells the church is this is that he wants us, he wants them to know Christ better. There's a difference, church, when I know about God and I know him. It's not about an intellectual thing. He doesn't just want you to have all the knowledge of God right here. He wants it also in here. Because if I don't have it in here, nothing changes. If God is not changing me on the inside, nothing changes. There's a lot of people in this world that have a lot of knowledge about God. They can spit verses to you. They, go, they Google everything or AI. I know people like that. And they know a lot about God, but they don't know him. Because when you know God more intimately, it transforms you from the inside out. And Paul is telling the church, I want you to know him better. I want you to have an intimate relationship with with Jesus. I don't just want you to know about him. I don't want you to be like a a history teacher that knows about history. I want you to know him in a deep way, in a personal way. Nothing against history teachers. I love history. But we don't know them intimately. I don't know Christopher Columbus intimately or George Washington. But Jesus is to be known intimately. In other words, church, our, our, our efforts and our times and the great reward that we are expecting starts when me and you choose today to know him intimately. That's why if you grew up in church and people kept telling you to pray and to read the word and it sounds like a broken record because you're like, dude, I've heard it all my life. It is because you are supposed to know him intimately. When you come to this place, it is because you are to know him intimately. The greatest reward is to have Jesus And what we can experience is to know him intimately. It's through prayer. It's through the word of God. It's to have a relationship with him. Your spouse, you know them intimately. You don't just know about them. You know them intimately. You know what what they like, what they don't like. You know what makes them happy, what makes them sad. 
you didn't get married. It's not like back in the day where you, you, didn't, you know, they would do those arranged marriages. You know the person that you married. You know them more intimately than anybody else in the room. But because you have an intimate relationship. Same thing with Jesus. Paul say, I need you to have an intimate, I need you to know him. Because when the times of testing come, church, when storms come, when things come, we're not shaken because we know who we serve. When troubles come our way at work, I'm not shaken because I know who I serve. When I got family problems, I'm not getting shaken and I'm not going to get crazy like everybody else because I know who God is in my life. And I have peace. It is very, very possible to have peace when things are going crazy in your life. It's possible. Some people feel like, some people might think you're crazy and might think you're weird. Like, how are you smiling when you're dealing with this? But it's because they don't know who you know. And who you know changes everything. So Paul says, I want you to know him better. I want you to have this wisdom and this revelation of who God is. I want you to know him. I want you to know the position you have. You need to know this. 